Hi, I'm Randy Hughes. And I'm Will Hughes. And we are Hughes Guitar and Repair. Uh, Hughes Guitars and Repair has started over 40 years ago, and we started building it to our own guitars in 2014, and we'd like to share our story. When I was uh, 14 years old, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Mike Barnes and I, we got guitars about the same time, and uh, we, we were learning to play together, and a, a friend of ours as we were growing up was Warren Haynes. And as we were growing up with all together, um, Mike got a really nice guitar uh, for Christmas one year, and I, I, I got a, uh, it was a Tesco Del Rey. And what was really kind of cool about the guitar was it came with a little plant pamphlet that told you how to adjust the truss rod and the action and things. So I did that, and I can remember Mike asking me, how, how, does, how come your guitar plays so much better than mine? And I said, well, you know, I, I adjusted mine, I set it up. He goes, how did you know to do that? So well, Mike came with a pamphlet to tell you how to do it. And he goes, well, mine didn't come with that. And uh, so he asked me for $5 if I could set his guitar up. So I did, uh, you know, as much as I could do at that time. But that's really where the passion for working with guitars kind of came from. My wife and I and my two boys were on vacation and she said, you know, Randy, you've done a lot, a lot of good for us. Uh, if you could do anything you wanted to do, what would you do in life? I said, well, I'd repair guitars for a living. She goes, well, what would that take? I said, I have no idea. And uh, so conversations, you know, drifted onto something else. And she, uh, I guess it was about two, three weeks later, she goes, well, how far have you found out about it? And I'm like, found out about what? She goes, working on guitars. I go, are you serious? And she's going, yeah. She goes, I really think you need to look into it. So um, I began to, to look into it to see, is this something I could really do for a living? Well, I finally reached that point where I said, okay, this is the day I need to open the shop. And of all days, it was on April the 1st, 1995. So April Fool's Day. And had no idea where this thing was going to go. Uh, I can tell you, I spent a lot of time praying about it. I spent a lot of time talking to people about it, uh, trying to get my name out, trying to get uh, an idea of where is this thing going to go. Well, during that time, um, my wife and I, we had two kids, um, Matt and Will. And as they were growing, uh, they, they were both around this uh, their whole lives. So starting in 1995, I began to work in my basement. I built a shop in the basement and got to the point where the basement was full of guitars. And it would be every once in a while, Will would come down and he would be like maybe three years old. And he'd stand on a box in front of my bench and we'd lay tools out. He'd hand me tools as I was working on guitars. And he began to work in there watching me and spending time with me. And he began to learn this stuff, not even knowing what he was doing. Well, he goes off to school, uh, gets a degree in mechanical engineering, and he comes back. And uh, he'd been working off and on in the shop. Uh, if you were to see Will's fret work, even golly, six, seven years ago, uh, you would not be able to tell the fret work he does versus mine. And so uh, as, as he went off to school, he went to work over at Borg Warner for a year. And he came to me one day and he said, Dad, he said, I see engineers come and go. And he said, um, I'd really like to work with you. And he said, all my friends tell me I'm an idiot if I don't. And uh, I said, well, well, you know, what would that look like? He goes, I really don't know. He said, um, uh, I knew you all my life as my dad. But he said, I didn't know who you were in the guitar world. He said, man, people know you all over the world. He said, you know, I started looking online and he said, you know, people are in, in you know, England and, and South America, people know who you are. And I said, well, you know, well, I just try to do the best job I can possibly do for, for the people who uh, trust me with their instruments. So uh, my goal is just to, to just do the best I can. And he said, but you know, you built this name. What we need to do is we need to build guitars and put that name on the guitar. He said, all the things that you do to make a guitar right that somebody else built, you can build into the guitar. So that sparked the idea of Hughes Guitars. And so we went from that point to um, Will coming on full time. We purchased a, a small CNC machine. We purchased the best software that we could possibly find. And we started there. Um, I can remember sitting down with Will and, and saying, uh, you know, th this, is, this is the basic theory of, of how to build a guitar. You need to know the placement of a nut, every fret, the pickups, 
the bridge and it has to have a center line. Once you have those points of reference so that we can have an instrument play in tune, everything to the left and right of that center line is where the art comes in. So I said, what you have to take into consideration is you've got the science side. The science side of guitars is having all those measurable pieces together. The art side is having something that's gonna feel comfortable and capture your eye. Something that you would be proud to hold, to be seen with. And so we began to talk about it and as we researched it more and dove into it, we began to play around with different shapes. And Will would sit at the computer for hours on end and draw bodies and do necks. And so as time went on, as he began to do that and taking the software that we were using, which is SolidWorks, he went deeper and deeper and deeper into that. And uh, which to be quite honest with you, I don't, I could watch him do it, but I can't do it. Um, but he's taken the information that, that I could give him and then he's carried it even further. Well, this is our Hughes guitar. This is our CEM2. Uh, this is a flat top style instrument. It's, um, it's in the ideas of between you know, like a, a Strat, a Tele, uh, an SG, where the neck and the body are all on the same plane. And so um, the thing that we were looking at when we were designing this guitar and what we were trying to accomplish was not only a look of a guitar that would be kind of a cool looking instrument and things like that, but also one that when a player picked it up, that they just go, oh my gosh, this thing plays like that. And in order for us to do that, we took the knowledge that we had learned over the years in working on guitars of making sure that everything was right with the neck. In my opinion, the neck of the guitar is the guitar. The body just happens to be the body attached to it. Uh, if we were working with an acoustic guitar, we could set up 10 guitars for a fingerstyle player. It doesn't matter if it's fingerstyle, jazz player, bluegrass player, but we could set 10 up identically. And you get all of those guys who are playing that guitar. If it was fingerstyle, they'd all say, man, this guitar plays great. They would argue for the next three months on how it sounds. They all are, they all hear differently and, but they all of a sudden you get the guitar playing right and all of a sudden they're inspired. So we spend a great deal of time and lots and lots of knowledge that we've gained over years on how to plane a fingerboard, get it proper, fretting proper, getting fret tops right, string spacing right, intonation right, uh, nut right, every aspect so that as this guitar goes together, it's as solid as we can possibly get the guitar. It's, it's when we bolt the neck on this guitar, that it's just completely solid. There's nothing inside the, the, the neck joint that's gonna cause this guitar to not be right. So some of the things that we do to get that way, uh, that we felt like, okay, this is the, what we would like on a guitar that's gonna make it better than most guitars out there and why we work so hard at it is we have a compound radius fingerboard so it starts off at a 10 inch radius at the nut a 13 inch radius at the 12 fret and a 16 inch radius at the bridge so that's a conical shape and what that means is is you can have a lower action and you can bend a string a whole step a step and a half and it's not going to fret out on guitars that have a tighter radius on the fingerboard you have to have a higher action that typically for most guys that's not what their desire is so we want to be able to get that right we also use stainless steel frets the thing that we always find with a lot of guys is you know they buy a guitar and a year later six months later uh, two years later they've got to have frets dressed they've got to have the guitar uh, refretted which is is time and money and so we felt like well if we use the highest quality fret wire that we can get and stainless steel that we can is harder to put in uh, but at the same time, the benefits just really outweigh everything else, in my opinion. To roll the edges of the fingerboard so that when you're, you're playing, that it's, the comfort level is just really as, as, as comfortable as possible. We have the ability on the back of the neck to make the thickness of it any thickness you want. Uh, we can make them, you know, the old baseball bat style, we can make them very thin. Uh, re we reinforce the neck with um, carbon fiber. We also have a dual action truss rod so we can make the neck move in any direction that we want it to go. So when it gets down to the playability side, so if a player comes in and, and they're a blues player and they like the action a bit higher, so when they bend, they want the, the finger to kind of go underneath as they're bending, it's going underneath the string above it. 
that that allows them to do that and have that feel. But we can also give it to a jazz player and get the action super low without any fret buzz. And so that playability, in my opinion, is the key to the whole thing. I've said this thousands of times to people, that if with this part of the guitar, the neck of it, it's like the foundation of a home when we start building this. If you get the foundation of a home square and level, the roof goes on great. With a neck, if you don't do the same thing, the frets aren't gonna come out right, the playability's not gonna come right, the intonation's not gonna come out right. And that's what we shoot for, is to make sure that we can get this guitar to play in any way that any customer would want it to play. For me, it, it is more than just guitars here. It's, um, it's, it's the heart that we have, the, the relationships that we have with customers and friends. Um, but, but the guitars, are, are the track to that of how we can, how we can have those relationships and, and, and really kind of pull it all together.